All right, so continuing on with what I guess will now be part two for chapter two, um, how to add a Razor View Imports page. What we're going to put on here, all right, is basically we're going to add a couple of lines that are going to tell the system that, hey, um, we want to be able to use classes from this future model, okay? And um, you typically want to include an imports page in a, in a page that imports a model. So this is what we're going to do is we're just going to follow this. It also makes it easier for us to go in and add tag helpers that we're going to look at in just a minute. So I'm going to follow again. This is very short. It's just these two lines. I've already got them in here even. So I'm going to copy those. <coughs> And again, just keep doing kind of this the way that I've been doing it. So we finished that model, so I can close that. So now I want to come in, as it says here, I want to right click on the views folder. And again, choose add new item. We did this before. Right click on views, choose add. All right, new item now. And what we want to choose in the dialog, as it says right here, we want to select the installed, right click on views and select add new item. In the resulting dialog, select the installed ASP.NET Core category. Okay. So I'm looking here. General. We want view imports. It's got to be in one of these. It's not going to be in here, I don't think. There we go. There's installed. Sorry about that. So in installed, we want to choose ASP.NET Core Web. And we want to choose from here Razor View Imports. It should be in here. There it is. It's automatically named for us. So I'm going to click Add. And we're going to put in those two lines. Okay, so again, as they mentioned in the book here, this import page makes it easier with these two lines to let the other files in the application know that we're going to be using model classes and tag helpers. And as the author mentions right here, most apps include one of these Razor View import pages because it makes it easier to work with model classes and tag helpers. Okay. Just repeating what I just said. So file, save all. Check and make sure that I am taping. Come on. And yes, I am taping. Good deal. All right. So jump back into the book then. All right. Now it says here you use a strong or an at model rather directive to bind the model to the view, also known as a strongly typed view. You are creating basically a relationship then between the model and the view all right this is going to allow us to use the asp tag helpers to be able to bind this stuff in here it says in particular the tag helper binds the three fields that we care about those being monthly investment interest rate yearly interest rate and years to their equivalents that are going to be in a form so in other words it's allowing the c sharp to talk to html 
as mentioned here, the ASP4 tag helper automatically is going to set all this up for us. There's other ways of doing it they mention here, but this is the recommended way of doing it. All right. Now, there's a lot of stuff in here. I don't want to get into too much stuff. We're going to be running through this throughout the book. Okay. All right. So right now, what we had had um, in our future value model was just those three, literally all that we had in there were those, um, the, the three things that we looked at before. All right. So as it says, you use the at model to bind the model to the view. This is known as a strongly typed view, and these tag helpers are used to automatically generate attributes for HTML elements. Also, they're used, as it says, to bind HTML elements to the properties that are models for the view. All right. Now, let's see. Strongly typed index view. They don't really tell you how to create this, so I'm going to see where this is in the code. All right, that is our index.cshtml is what it looks like. So let's see if we have that now. Our index.cshtml should be the file that was created for us automatically when we created the home controller. We no longer need this file. All right, so home index.cshtml. So you can see what's in here now. This is the page that runs or ran when we created the program earlier. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to replace it with what they had in the book. Now what's the difference? Well there's going to be a lot so let me do a file save all and let's run the program. So remember previously we just got that link. Well this is what we have now. There's no CSS that has been applied to it but that's okay. All right, and we've got that initial value. Now, you'll notice Mary's not on here, but Mary's not on here because we're not printing out a name. All right, but that $99,999.99 that has been um, formatted in currency, we did that earlier. But I believe if we put in anything here right now, nothing's going to happen. See that? It just clears. Okay. And that's fine. So let me stop the run, save this, and we should be able to close this for now. And jump back into the book. It's going to be really imperative that you read every chapter. This is just a new animal that we're working with here. All right. <clears throat> now, handling get and post requests. All right. One, one of the things we're going to be doing in here is we're going to be putting in this stuff here. This is called decorating a method. You decorate in a lot of ways. This is letting the system know that for the uh, get, basically all that should happen here is the future value should be set to zero, and then we return it. And for post, all right, it should call calculate future value. What is going to happen here? is this is going to go in and it's going to work in conjunction with the model to check and make sure that everything is the way it should be. We're going to decorate the model in a little bit too and put add more stuff to the model than was there previously. All right. And we're going to make sure, for example, that the monthly investment, I think it's got to be between like a hundred dollars and 5,000 that the, um, uh, the yearly investment rate has got to be between a tenth of a percent and 10 percent and that the number of years is like between 1 and 50. And what this is going to do then is it's going to verify it. It's going to say, hey, if all those made sense, if all those worked, then calculate the future value. So as they mention here, a common pattern for doing this is to use the same URL for both your get and your post. You should know this because we did this last semester. All right. Typically, as it says, the get is used 
to display a blank input form like we have right now. Then a post is used to handle it after you submit the form. You can overload action methods, which is what we actually did there, because the signatures or what's in the parentheses are different. Typically, you're going to find that for the get, it's going to be empty, and the post will contain the one or more parameters. Finally, as it says there, when an action method is, accepts a model object, the model view controller architecture uses the data stored in the get or in the post to set the properties. All right, so first we talk about get. And once we do this, it should look like this. Then after we put in a value there and there and there and we click calculate, this should change. This is a read-only value, basically. And it should run and look like this. So we'll run this one later. This is page 63. And we'll try to make sure that these are the values that we get. So think about this. This says if we do $100 a month, all right, times 12 months would be $1,200, times three years would be $3,600. And at 3%, we're going to make $171.46 over those three years. So I've already mentioned this, but I want to say it again. As it says here, when the future value app begins, it sends a get request to the index action of the home controller. All right. When you clear, when you clear the link, it sends the get re request to the index action of the home controller. So basically, it's making sure you're starting with a clean slate. When you fill in everything and you click the Calculate button, the app sends a post request. If, as it says, if the form has been filled out correctly, okay, it'll take those three values that we set in the model, and it'll add them or put them onto the form, and it'll, cal it'll call the model's Calculate Future Value method. All right. Organizing the files for the view. Okay. It tells us that we should have in our WW root, we should have a um, CSS folder, and inside of it, it should have a file So let's see if we have anything in there right now. So not there, of course, but here. All right, so we've got our www root, CSS, there's our site. And is this what's supposed to be in there, or are we supposed to add to it? So it looks like we're supposed to add to it, so let's do that right now. hard to move once you get it in there so let's find do it like this all right so taking it from the top here body we want some padding font family will be Arial Helvetica, Sans Serif, okay, and I'll tell you what, let's go in and let's grab everything else that's in here and let's just get rid of it. In fact, let's, even more than that, just in case we might need something from that later, let's com comment it out. So there it's coming it out. So now we've got just the body set up. H1. We want the margin top to be zero. And our color of our text to be navy. Oops. Next, for all labels, we want them to display inline lock with a width of 10 M's 
and rate padding of 1M. Finally, for any divs, we want them to have a margin bottom of 0.5M. That's everything, so let's do a file, save all. Let's go back in here and run the program and look at or admire kind of our handiwork. Well, that doesn't look very good. Thought I'd saved it. It should automatically save. It's okay. We're going to get it to work in just a moment. I think I actually know what the problem is, but we'll take a quick look in a second. Oh, I don't know how to move this thing around when I need to. Dang it. Okay, we'll do it like that. Again, it says the style, style sheet provides a way to store format. You know all that stuff. So let's come in here and do a file. Save all. I thought we did that previously, but we may or may not have. So... There we go. Let me grab this and go back again. We're almost finished with the chapter, so. We want to add a razor layout and a view start. Might be why we're not getting everything we want. So we want to right click on view shared and add a razor layout. Click the add button. All right. As it says, this razor layout will provide a way to store elements common to multiple web files in a single file. The view start lets you specify the default razor layout of the razor views of the web app. So here's the code. So we will need a views shared layout and a views shared start. The good news is I already have both of those. All right. So let me come in here. It looks like the program is still running, so let's stop the run. Close this CSS file. And we want to, in views, shared, we want to add a new view. All right. All right, so we want to again follow these steps that are here. Let's cancel this. See if I can move this over a little bit so I can again attempt to play with these things together here. All right, and then cut this one down. There we go. I'm trying to split these across the screen. I know there's a split screen, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to come into here. I'm going to right-click on the View Shared folder, and I'm going to select Add New Item. So I'm just following their lead here. Select the ASP.NET Core, and select Razor Layout. There it is. And that should give me a layout, underscore layout.cshtml. Add that. So now we've got that. And then we want to add another one. So right mouse click, add, again, another new item. And this goes in the views folder. So I did that incorrectly. So right click the views folder. Okay. okay, let's run this. So this is the Razor View Start. So right-click the Views folder, 
and select add new item. All right. Again, from the core here, we want to we want to choose Razor View Start and click Add. Okay. And again, if you need a little more, they do mention here that the Razor layout, the one we did first, provides a way to store elements common to multiple pages. And the Razor View Start lets you specify the default layout. All right. So here is going to be the code. So again, let me cut that down and see if I've got it correct. So doc type, et cetera, et cetera. View big title. Well, here's the thing that we're missing. We are not, we do not have that style sheet in here. And we I think that's about all we don't have. So let's put that in. So link rel equals style sheet you've done this countless times before href equals we got to give it the right path tilde which i think believes means go from the root slash css slash site dot css i've already got the render body doesn't like something that i just did here probably didn't put an end tag on it but we'll see that's it. Okay. So file save. And the other one is a very simple line that basically just says we have default layout. So let's try to run it again and see if it looks a little prettier now than it did earlier. All right, it's definitely looking the way we want it to look. We still don't have this in here, so if we put in numbers, it's still not going to do anything because we are not calling. All right, we are not calling the uh, the model's future value, so this doesn't do anything. All right, we're going to do that next, and that's about all we have left to do, I believe here. All right, about 10 pages left in the chapter here. So we just added the razor view. Oh, we didn't do that. Let's do that right now. So it says the next figure shows how to add a razor view that works with the razor layout and view. All right, so to do that, you select razor view item from the add new scaffold item dialog instead of razor view empty. So we're going to do this. All right, then we'll look at the code. This is going to set our title. This is going to set our layout. It says the page is using a hypothetical razor layout named underscore layout calculator designed especially for all calculator pages of the web app. This is for now, that's what you need to know in Chapter 7. We'll talk more about it. All right, so let's bring this up so we can try to finish this chapter up. All right, so we want to right click, as it says, the folder for the view. All right. Use home, for example, and choose add view. I'm hoping I'm doing this correctly. We'll find out. Add view. It says using the add new scaffold item dialog from 2.5 to select. So it says here, add new scaffolded item. Use the add new scaffolded item from figure 2.5. And it 
it says there to select razor view and then click add well there's razor view right there and then choose add there we go that's what we wanted was this the view name I'm going to just use what they have here so the view name will be index the template will be empty without model we'll have the use a layout page okay so I want to make sure that's exactly the way that this should be so the code is shown right here for the views home index.cshtml file rather than me keying all that code in I should have this already so this is views home index.chml chstml so I'm not even going to put this in yeah I'll add it that's fine I think I already did you want to no so I've already got it so I can cancel now so right now my index.ch it's got all this in it okay I think I'm set. The yeah, last thing that we have to do in here is we've got to add our, the code to validate our user input. All right. So we're going to set validation rules in the model. We have to figure out these rules and what we want to do. So you'll notice how this changes. Previously, we only had in this line for the monthly investment this line oh, I'm sorry this line for the monthly investment we had in another line for the yearly interest rate and another line for the years but we want to change that so it looks like this so previously we only had this line here and this line here and this line here we had nothing else all right but I do have the finished product here okay so let me go and grab that there we go so we need this so I'm going to replace the code I currently have in my models folder in my model with this code and then we can go back and quickly take a look at it here <clears throat> as we finish this chapter up so under models there's what we have now not very much these are our three properties and here is our method but there's no decorators in here so I'm going to do a control a and remove those and a control V so what we've added here is this when we go and decorate we need to add a using statement for data annotations we are now going to require that there be a monthly investment if there's not if we leave it blank it's going to say please enter a monthly investment also the range or that monthly investment must be between a dollar and five hundred dollars if it's not we're going to put in our own where it says error message here we're customizing the default error messages here the, the monthly investment is question mark I believe means we can leave it null and then finally it will take nulls just so the program won't blow up there and here and also here all right but for the yearly interest rate it expects that it is between a tenth of a percent and ten percent if we don't put in a number that meets in there we get our customized error message that says yearly interest rate must be between those two values finally for the number of years okay the error message will say please enter number of years and if we don't put anything in there so this is what will happen if we put nothing in there because it's a required field same with this and same with this if we put in something illegal for monthly investment that'll run something illegal for yearly interest rate that'll run something illegal for a number of years that'll run okay so file save all 
what you should notice now was we're again we're almost finished here is that if we run this and we put nothing in here I think we haven't told the, our, our summary that we wanted to run yet all right so we better add that before we do anything else I guess as it says when you use a property with a knowable type in a calculation the result must be assigned to a nullable type that's that question mark that's in there if a method returns a nullable type the return type must be defined as nullable as well all right so here's where we have to check the data validation so as it says here this is what we are going to end up putting into all right this is our post right here and I believe what we need to do in the end is I need to come back here because I've got the home controller I've got the actual source code for that so I can now close this I can close this I can close this I can close that and here's our home controller so I'm going to replace the current code in the home controller with this code and run the program again so let me close everything I've got open here close 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 you bring up the home controller which now has just this remember that was set up for when we originally ran the program now we've come in here and again what we're saying is when you first run this it should there should be nothing in the future value and basically everything else should be blank and when we click the button to, to do the calculation it'll go back and work in conjunction with the model class to make sure that the three fields the monthly investment the yearly interest rate and the number of years are valid using those validation decorators that we put in if they are it'll call the calculate future value if it's not it'll keep future value set to zero so again let me do a file save all and let's run this because now it should be working I don't think we've left anything out so here there we go and we could go in and we could take this text and make it red there's ways of making it appear to the right instead of in a summary or above or below it there's ways of doing this but if you remember quite a ways back what we looked at here let me see where are we um, see we're on page 77 so we have finished the chapter but I want to jump back to page 63 so I think on page 63 there we go so I want to put in these values so let me do this I'm going to do a uh, print screen and I'm going to throw this into quickly into a paint file and then I'm going to just grab this and we're going to use these values to test our program now and make sure that it works all right so on our program run here there right there we go okay so we want to use let's knock this down like that and whoops not there bring that over like that and we'll bring in this cut this down as well and we're going to use both of these so here we'll have 100 here we will put three and here we will put three now we should get if this is correct three thousand seven hundred and seventy one dollars and forty six cents and indeed we do all right the clear works so to my knowledge at least everything is now working in here all right hopefully that helped I know basically all I did was just redo what was in here when I come back I'm going to go over chapter 3 very quickly probably in 15 minutes or so worth of time 
And in there, we will be talking about uh, Bootstrap. Be a lot of review. And then we're going to go in and I'm going to start on what we're going to be doing for the test. And I'm going to walk through that again very slowly. So I'll be back for that in a few minutes.